Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Jewels. Uh, no changes to the deck this week. There is an argument for a few cards, but I've decided not to add them in. Uh, Built to Last, which is Built to Smash's white alternative that gives uh, creatures indestructible. Um, I would only add that in to protect the Siege Modification combo, but since we're doing it on turn 3 and tapping out entirely, it doesn't seem like it'll get its use out, and if we do it on turn 4, it's like it never really did anything, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm ended up not adding in that. There's also Radiant Flames as well, but I think Planar Outburst is just a little bit better and a little bit more consistent. So, if you do want to make any changes, then those are the two cards to add in. Uh, taking away stuff like the Sky Skiff is pretty much the only thing. I just didn't run it, really want to upset the balance of the deck because it's been doing really well, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> to say it's kind of a janky little combo, but yeah, most people seem to treat the attack in this deck like a Turbo Fog deck. Just attack in and try to get a fog out and then leave all your defenses down, which allows us to start your engines and swing in. Seems to be a lot of instances like that when I've been playing, so, you know, as long as people don't get that there's a start your engines in the deck, we should be fine. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the games. Alright, we're in. We're on the draw. We have one land and it's an ether hub, so I'm going to have to throw it back. This one's flooded, so we're throwing it back. Two lands into a SRAM and a Consulate Dreadnought and a Depala. This one's pretty sweet, actually. It's better than both of the first two hands combined, I would say. Alright, so Mountain into Dreadnought. Playing the Mountains first, just in case we draw more Mountains and Siege Modifications, things like that. Sram can draw off the Sky Skiff anyway, so... And with Red Mana, I'm not sure he might, if he's going to survive or not. There is a Take Inventory, so this is going to be Mill then, I'm guessing. That would be my assumption. And we get a planes. So, do we want a Saram or do we want to veteran a motorist instead? It's easy to kill the motorist, but it's also easy, just as easy to kill the Saram. We're not going to draw off of this, but we can scry off of this and deal three damage next turn. So I think the motorist is probably better. Let's try to find ourselves a siege modification and a land would be the best thing in the world. Well, there's a land. Yeah, I guess we'll take the land. Do I want the Inventor's Feather? No, I need double red. So we'll take the mountain and bottom the Inventor's Fair. So we've got our threat on the board. He's probably got removal for it, though. There's a Sphinx's tutelage, so the race has begun. We don't have removal for it. But we can easily race. Okay, so we go a mountain into Dipala. Create seven points uh, worth of power. Which we can then tap down. Turn into eight points on the dreadnought. Thanks to the motorist. Oh, nine points, sorry. Yeah, it's plus one and then plus one for vehicles, thanks to Dipala. So that's nine damage on turn three. It's not bad. Not bad at all. He's dead in the next two turns if he doesn't find enough answers here. It's crew six as well, so Saram coming down can crew the Dreadnought again. It just won't have the plus one, plus one from the motorist. Goes with a lightning axe on Depala. Yep, that'll do it. And a galvanic bombardment for our other one. Sure. Discards a thing in the ice. That's fine. We get another veteran motorist. Uh, so, hmm, we could saram into doing nothing. Or we could vert a motorist into maybe a land, and then we can surround Sky Skiff next turn. I think that's what we want to do. Vetter a motorist. Scry a planes to the top. The board wipe to the bottom. This is not a creature-based matchup, so 
That is a dead card for us. Mills us again. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. He hits our land. We lose our Depala and our land. I forgot scrying will do absolutely bugger all. <laughs> Alright, two triggers. He hits the start your engines, unfortunately. That could have just won it for us. Collective Defiance. Four damage to the motorist. Sure. It's not a redraw on it, so it's not the worst thing in the world. There are better uses. Well, we'll go Saram. And pass the turn. Mills us again. We lose a Mountain and a Cultivate's Caravan. Pour over the pages to draw three cards. Untap two lands and discard a card. Love this card. Three triggers. Mostly lands and a... Oh, the other kit start your engines. Damn it. We've only got one left in our deck. But we don't even have the mana or the the firepower right now to use it efficiently, so I'm not too fussed. Sky Skiff draws us a card. Scatter to the winds, that's fine, it's already got its value. It is a cast trigger after all. And toolcraft, which is far worse. Into an ether hub. We've got five power on the board, unfortunately one shot of Dreadnought. We can swing in with Sram. We could build to smash Sram for an extra three points, but I'll save it. Because it'll use energy, essentially. He's got us about halfway. It's, uh, this one goes Copter and a Mountain. Galvanic Bombardment for the Exemplar. He's got all the answers. But we got him down to nine. Fevered Visions. Alright. That's going to help. It's also going to hurt as well. Because he gets to draw a card on his end step and we get to draw an extra one on ours. So Mills us for two more. Peace Walker and a Mountain. We get another Mountain. Not what we wanted to see there. We can win next turn if he doesn't kill our Saram with the double built to smash. So here's hoping. On our end step we get a veteran motorist. Alright, this is gonna come close, is this one. Hits us with tutelage, takes the Inventor's Fair and the Consulate Dreadnought, draws three more cards, untaps two lands, discards a card. Yeah, it's gonna be really close. If not, just over right now. Mills for six bare minimum. There's the final start your engines. Heart of Kieran, Sky Skiff, Ether Hub, Lands. Oath of Jace, draw three, discard two. Ah, oh, there's a fiery temper. Damn it. Yep, that's game. If he chooses to use that on our Saram, he wins. Yep. I'm pretty sure we can't come back from this. Although, yet again, if we survive the next turn, which will be pretty much all lands in his hand, then maybe we can do it, but somehow I doubt it. Better a motorist. Scry 2. Um, I mean, two different colours. Just ensures that the next one doesn't trigger twice. We'll go Saram. If he can't mill eight cards, we win. Somehow I doubt it. Or seven, should I say. Yeah, that fiery temper was the only thing that stopped him from losing right there. Which is really unfortunate. Takes us down to five. 
Collective Defiance. Redraws his hand, and that's going to be game. A fiery temper from winning. Ah. Uh, I guess that's why you built to last. And say goodbye to our deck. What's going on with the top of our deck right there? Oh my god. Spazzing out. Another Fevered Visions. That's another two triggers. Yeah. It's going through the motions now. Well, that's mill for you. You either win or you lose. You can take that quote. And we lose. Alright. Not ideal. But it happens. Alright, I'll see you in the next game, guys. Alright, we are in. Um, ooh. With a Sram, we can draw off Heart of Kieran. We've got Needle Spires as a tap land for first turn. I think we could probably draw into something nice here. It's not the best hand in the world, but it's not the worst by any stretch. But yeah, Sram drawing into more vehicles is just more card draw, which would be really nice. Our opponent on the fat stacks here. Gonna need those Evolving Wilds. I wouldn't crack them just yet, because you're gonna get mana screwed, probably. There is a forest. Full art. Fair enough. A build smash, not what we wanted to see there, unfortunately. But we go Saram. And pass the turn. This is gonna be a multicolored deck. I'm just wondering which colors we have to worry about. Can rule out Mill. <laughs> Maybe he's running a fat stack too, because he hates mill. This is a good point. Green, red. This is a ramp deck then. That's playing every single big creature in the entire game. Hmm. Alright. Another creature would be quite nice. It means we can crew up the Heart of Kira and then and start swinging in for four. Uh, we get a tap land. Let's first play Heart of Kira and see if we draw into a one drop. Otherwise I'll play the tap land. We draw into more lands. We're getting flooded. Alright. Swing for two I guess. Gets burnt away regardless if he's got removal so might as well get that two in. Okay. What you got? Are you just red green? Looks to be. Into a thriving rhino. Okay. Energy focus. Th I still think it's a ramp stompy kind of deck though. Ooh, Peace Walker Colossus. Not. Bad. Not bad at all. Might as well. Draw a card. See if we draw... Yeah. A Cultivates Caravan. So we're kind of building up a decent uh, board state here. Soon we're going to be able to animate our creatures and things like that with Peace Walker. She's going to make this thriving rhino look very pathetic. Extra lands, so he's up to four mana. He can start properly ramping if he is indeed a ramp deck with explosive vegetation. That is the premium ramp spell. Former Monvuli Acid Moss, who I miss dearly every single day because it was so trolly. I loved it. All right. Getting him for two. Is he going to pay the energy to make it a 3-4? He is. Okay. We are not going to block. So he's going to have to generate more energy. Otherwise, this is just going to stick around as a 3-4. Which is not scary at all. And another Thriving Rhino. Okay. Cool. Key to the city. Hi. 
Okay, well, with that, we can cultivate his caravan. We've still got two mana open to animate a Peace Walker. Draw an Inventor's Fair, which is going to start gaining us some life. Okay, so I think we could animate a creature on out on his turn so that he doesn't attack in with his rhinos. This one getting out of hand is the the only worry that I have. If he starts gaining enough energy for that, it'll be a problem. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we'll just hold back this turn. And then next turn, we've got the Heart of Kieran and the Cultivates Caravan to animate up every single turn. But for now, we've got a 5-5 five five back to uh, block. And Ether Hub, generate a little bit of energy. I assume he's going to plan on using it, though. And he's swinging in. This has got Pump Spell written all over it, but... It's the whole point of this turn was to do this, so... Let's see if he's got it. No energy on the 3-4. He's going to put it on the other guy instead. That comforts me slightly. Nah, nah, he's got pump spell. Blossom in defense. Makes it a 5-6. Sure. Sure. Goes back down to a 3-4 though. And a Dreadnought. Alright, there's definitely no chance that he's got enough pop spells to block that. So, Mountain. Draw a card from Saram. Get another Inventor's Fair. Okay. Another Plains. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 mana open. So, we can afford to suit up Zehard of Giram. Swing in for 4 Vigilance. And then we can suit up the Dreadnought as a blocker to hold him back as a 7-11. Cool. Back on even terms in terms of life total. Plays land. Hmm. Is he going to attacks? He is. All right. Got an answer to a seven eleven. You get the answers out of his hand if he's got them. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he checked the size of that Dreadnought when he attacked him. <laughs> you just assume one mana, it's going to be pathetic. It's not. It's just hard to crew. Alright, we gain one life. Back up to 12. Draw into more lands, which means Key to the City is going to be really nice here. Because it's going to allow us to... Make things unblockable for a start, which means he's dead in two turns from our Dreadnought. But also we can start discarding our extra lands and drawing on the next one. Go for seven. So we can make the Dreadnought unblockable next turn. So he needs an answer for it now. can also animate up the Heart of Kieran to block this guy if he so choose to do so. Uh, I don't really, because the worst pump spell I can think of is Primal Bellow, and that's only plus three, plus three right now. Yep. He sees the writing on the wall. 
Can't think of anything you could cast right now that would save him, other than a Reclamation Sage or any other artifact or enchantment removal. And if he had it, I don't think he would have scooped. Makes it into a 3-2. We'll take Brawler. Plays a Mountain. So this is just red-green energy with a metric ton worth of cards in it. Fair play. No attacks from our opponent. I'd like to say that him not considering the Dreadnought was the failure of this this matchup for him, but I pretty much think we would have just ended up doing this anyway, just a, a turn later. Suit up the Dreadnought, because we can just make it unblockable. So... You know, it's not as if there's really anything you can do about it. We'll get rid of the spare inventor's fair. Swing in for seven. We've built to smash back up. And that's going to be game. Yup. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's episode, so if you did enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, it helps me out a great deal, lets me know you're enjoying these series, as always, be sure to subscribe for some more Magic Jewels content in the future. The next week is going to be subscriber decks, so if you do have a deck that you'd like to see me play, or you have an idea for a deck that you want me to build, then be sure to let me know in the comments section below, or you can email me, and the details are in the description, also my Twitter account if you want to follow and send me it there as well. It's up to you guys. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again. Bye bye.